Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to start talking about what we call polar coordinates. Now just to talk about what we've been using so far, what we've been using so far are what we call rectangular coordinates. So in rectangular coordinates we have a coordinate system with two axes. We have a y-axis and we have an x-axis. This is our x, this is our y, this is what we're used to using. So if we have a point out somewhere in space P, then how we determine what this point is, is we measure what the x distance is from our origin. This is what we call x. We also measure what our y distance is from our origin. This is what we call y. And so a point with a particular distance x away uh, on, in a horizontal direction from the origin and y away in a vertical direction from the origin we denote as PXY. So we have these two different units that we're concerned with that when we take them both in tandem we're able to find our point uh, given this coordinate system. Now polar coordinates works in a little bit different way. We're still going to have two different measurements but the way we do it is our axis looks a little bit different. Our axis here is just going to be a straight line and actually it's not quite a line, it's going to be a ray. So our, it ends here and it goes off to the right infinitely. This is called our polar axis. Now this point here that we started from, this is still the point zero, zero in rectangular coordinates, but we call this our origin. or pole. You can call it either, means the same thing. And if we have a point P out in space and polar coordinates, instead of measuring the distance horizontally and the distance vertically that P is from the origin, instead we're going to first measure the distance directly from the origin to P. And we're going to say that this distance has a measurement R. So this is the distance directly from the origin to P. So the straight line that goes, or the line segment, that goes from the origin to P. We call this R. And our second unit of measurement to find P is going to be the angle theta, where that angle is the angle between the polar axis and this line from the origin to P. Okay, so here, our P, we would denote this as P R theta. All right, we're going to be working with polar coordinates a little bit, and we'll see in the next section, actually. Polar coordinates, it's just a different way of measuring the same thing, uh, but with this method of measurement, we're able to do a lot of stuff that's very difficult to do in rectangular coordinates. It simplifies a lot of things down um, quite nicely that are difficult or complicated to do when we're dealing with the coordinates x and y. Now, in terms of negative and positive values of r, uh, let's take a look. We say that PR theta is the point R distance from the origin at an angle of theta from the polar axis. Now if we have a negative R, and this right here, this is what we just talked about. So we have this PR theta, it's a distance R from the origin at an angle theta from the polar axis. If we have a negative R, we say P negative R theta is the point R distance from the origin at an angle of negative theta from the polar axis. So in this picture up here, if I was going to draw um, P negative R theta, we would go out in this direction here. And instead of P negative R theta, let's call it Q negative R theta. So what we're doing is theta is orienting ourselves to the direction of the point but r is going to be the total distance. Now this distance here is still r, but the negative tells us in which direction we're moving with respect to the angle theta. So to kind of relate it to what we've done with rectangular coordinates, we can think of the x-axis the x-axis is this ray theta equals zero in polar coordinates. Right, so this ray theta equals zero. It starts at the origin and goes off to the right. I'm going to draw it on top of this x-axis. So whenever we have a negative x, let's say this is my negative x value over here, 
This negative means that I'm moving in the opposite direction with respect to theta equals zero. Okay, so that's going to happen the same way in polar coordinates, only now it's a little bit more dynamic. Our theta is changing, so what negative r means is I'm moving in the opposite direction of where theta is pointing, so we need to know what theta is in order to orient ourselves properly. Um, so we'll see a lot more examples of this, but, but let's take a look at some simple examples, get a little bit used to this idea. So let's say we want to plot the point p 4 pi over 4 and the point q negative 4 pi over 4. So a little example, we can see a little bit more what we're talking about. First we want to draw our polar axis. And I need to know what a distance 4 is. So let's go ahead and say this is 1. And I'm going to draw out 4 more of these little dashes. So this is 4 right here. Now this distance of 4 from the origin along this polar axis is going to be consistent with the distance of 4 in any direction. Oh, that's not very good. Let's, uh, let's try that again. Okay, so we have this circle. This circle is all of the points now that are a distance of 4 from my origin or pole. So to find the point p, 4 pi over 4, we can draw this ray at about pi over 4. We know pi over 4 is about a 45 degree angle. It's going to be about right there. So this is an angle of pi over 4. And this distance now is a distance of 4. So this is my point p, 4 pi over 4. So if you draw out some distances on your polar axis, just keep in mind that as your angle changes, that distance 4 is maintained by the circle with radius 4 centered at the origin. If I'm drawing point P4 pi over 4, that doesn't mean I look at pi over 4 and then go out until I'm above 4, right? It's not going to be out here somewhere, right? This would be, if we we're doing rectangular coordinates, I was looking at an x value of 4, it would be directly above it. So that's not quite how it works here in polar coordinates. In polar coordinates, we're looking at this distance 4. So we can think of this as uh, if our r equals 4, that means our point must fall somewhere on this circle of radius 4 centered at our origin. So now q of, neg of negative 4 pi over 4, pi over 4 is still my angle, but remember when we have a negative number, we're still going to travel that distance just in the opposite direction. So if we go in the opposite direction of pi over 4, a distance of 4, notice my distance here is positive. The negative is just giving us a direction with respect to the angle. So this is my q, negative 4, pi over 4. OK, let's do another example. This takes a little bit to get used to. Really, you really need to spend some time, familiarize yourself with this, get used to the mechanics of this new system of measuring points in space. So let's plot the point p6, negative 7, pi over 6 and the point q, negative 6, 11 pi over 6. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. First I want to draw my polar axis. So here's my origin here on this left hand side. And let's go ahead and denote out a distance of 6. So let's say this is 1. I'm going to try to keep this even all the way to 6. So that's 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is my distance of 6 along the polar axis. Now any other point that's a distance of 6, or where my r equals 6, is going to be somewhere along this circle centered at the origin where the radius of this circle is now 6. Oh, it looks like this is a little more of an ellipse. Let me see if I can do that a little bit better. There we go. That looks a little bit more like a circle. OK. So now we want to try to plot these two points. I have my p, which is 6, negative 7 pi over 6. Now my distance of 6 is going to be somewhere along this circle with an angle of negative 7 pi over 6. That's about right here, isn't it? About right there. All right, we're going in the negative direction with our angle. This is a negative 7 pi over 6 from my polar axis. and 
um, we're along this circle so we know this is a distance of 6 so here's my p 6 negative 7 pi over 6 alright now let's take a look at q if I want q to be negative 6 11 pi over 6 first I need to note that 11 pi over 6 ends up about right here isn't it 11 pi over 6 is coterminal with negative pi over 6 That's not great. Let me see if I can try this one more time. I want it to kind of match up there. All right, that looks better. So 11 pi over 6, I'm starting here, going all the way around, ending right here. This is my 11 pi over 6 in yellow. Now, because this angle is 11 pi over 6, this point down here in the bottom right where this yellow line touches the edge of the circle this would be 6 11 pi over 6 But remember if we're dealing with negative 6 that means I'm gonna go in the opposite direction with respect to this angle but that opposite direction now we see that's the same as negative 7 pi over 6 isn't it so this point P that we drew is actually equal to the point Q we have that P 6 negative 7 pi over 6 and Q negative 6 11 pi over 6 are actually the same point in polar coordinates. All right, this leads us to think, when else does this happen? Uh, what can we say about points being the same points even if they look a little bit different? So we wanna note that if we have a point PR theta, we can also write that point as PR theta plus 2n pi, or as P negative R theta plus 2n plus 1 pi, where n is some integer. In other words, what I'm saying is, um, a point r theta is the same point as any point with the same r where the angle is theta plus any even increment of pi or the point negative r where I have theta plus any odd increment of pi right 2n is always even 2n plus 1 is always odd and that's how we're that's why we're writing it in this way uh, so let's see another example real quick we're gonna graph out a point and then we're gonna uh, try to write it in a couple of different ways with this in mind. So let's say I'm looking at the point P 3 pi over 2. So drawing my polar axis let's say this is 1, 2, 3 now pi over 2 is the angle here, isn't it? This is my pi over 2. And again, we can think a distance 3 along this angle pi over 2, that's going to be as if I took this distance 3 on my polar axis and followed it along a circle. So that's going to be right here. We don't always have to draw a circle, uh, but we just want to make sure the distance here is the same as the distance here. It's still 3 away from the origin. So let's go ahead and write that as 3. So this is my p right here. This is p 3 pi over 2. Now I'm going to write this in a couple of different ways now, and I want you to go ahead and make sure before you end this video that you can confirm for yourself that these are actually the same thing. I could also write this as p 3 5 pi over 2. Right? I've just added 2 pi to my theta, and that's what's happening right here. This is my second here in pink. I've added 2 pi, so my n was 1. If I let my n be 1 over here, this is going to be the same thing as p, actually if I let my n be 0 over here, let's do that one. This is the same as p negative 3, 3 pi over 2. Right? In other words, my angle 3 pi over 2 means I'm facing down, straight down from this origin, but because I'm going a distance negative 3, that means I'm going a distance of 3 in the opposite direction of theta, in 100 degree direction away from theta. All right, so this is the basic polar coordinates. Now in the next video, we're going to look at how we can relate polar and rectangular coordinates together if we ever want to convert from one to the other. We'll see you there.